This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Well, chapter 25 brings us finally, and no doubt for you, thankfully, to the last of the taxes that are within our Tax UK syllabus. And this tax, value-added tax, or VAT as we'll know it from now on, is a slightly different tax to those that we've seen before. I don't suppose you'll remember the introductory chapter where you had uh, various issues pertaining to the tax system dealt with. But let me take you back to and remind you about one of those areas in that first chapter. And it was this area, a comparison of direct and indirect taxation. All of the taxes that we've seen so far, which, as you'll know, income tax, corporation tax, capital gains tax and inheritance tax there, these are all said to be direct taxation. Why the word direct? Taxes are paid directly to the government based on the income and profit of the individual. So the tax or the company, as the case may be, the taxpayer pays taxes directly there to the government. There will be an assessment of an individual, there will be an assessment of the company. Neither the individual or the company has to settle and pay that tax liability by the various due dates. But what happens with VAT is somewhat different. It, again, if you're not used to the uh, name value-added tax, what you may be used to in terms of maybe your domestic system is a sales tax. Now then, this is known as an indirect taxation. Why? Because the individual does not pay that tax directly over to HMRC. There is an intermediary. Taxes are collected via an intermediary who passes them on to the government. For example, this what we see with VAT, VAT, where the consumer pays VAT to a supplier trader and the trader then pays over to the government. So you or I as individual consumers, when we go into a shop and we buy a product, will be paying a price inclusive of VAT. Now, the VAT rate, the standard rate of VAT, as you'll discover in the first lecture on uh, this chapter, is 20%. So if the retailer was, as you'll see in the deed examples in the first detailed lecture, was wishing to sell their product for £100, then if standard rate VAT at 20% has to be paid on that, then they must sell that product for £120, inclusive of VAT. So I, the consumer, go to the shop, yeah, I want that, I pay over 120 I do not pay over two separate amounts. I don't pay the trader £100 and HMRC £20. I pay the trader £120. And it is the trader's responsibility, as you will discover within this chapter, it is the trader's responsibility then to account for that VAT. Now, what a trader will have, of course, is collecting amounts of VAT paid by their customers. They collect the money in, they sell me the product for £120. Of that £120, £100 is theirs, £20 belongs to Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. But they, in turn, will have been a customer from a supplier business where again, they will have been charged VAT. So what we'll discover in this chapter is that for a trader, on the sales that the trader makes, they have to charge output VAT. On the sale going out, output VAT. Again, at the standard rate, if uh, relevant, 20%. But on the purchases that they make, on the expenses they incur, when they pay the bill for the goods that they have bought, for the services that have been performed from uh, uh, for them, and they're paying to other VAT registered businesses, then they have to pay an amount also inclusive of VAT. So they've suffered some input VAT on what they have bought in. The goods bought in, materials purchased, the uh, services performed by suppliers to their particular business. So what they will do for a set VAT return period is to account for the excess of the output VAT on the sales that they have made over the input VAT that they have suffered on the purchases and expenses that they have incurred. 
and in that way HMRC gets its money. Each trader for each relevant VAT return period will submit that VAT return and pay over the extra amount of VAT made on their sales as compared to what they've suffered on their purchases and expenses. So it is the trader that is accounting for that VAT, not the individual. That individual like you or I walking into the shop, that final consumer, we pay a figure. For me, in my example, £120. We do not segregate between the trader and HMRC. The trader has to account for that VAT. Okay, so we've got direct taxes, as we have seen, and that form basically the vast majority of our syllabus. And now we've got an indirect tax, VAT. What we've stated already in our introduction to VAT is that it's an indirect taxation, and one where it is a trader that will account for and collect the VAT and pay that over on a timely basis through VAT returns to HMRC. So a question arises, therefore, about when do traders have to do this? When do they take the responsibility for accounting for this VAT? Well, in order for them to do that, they have to be registered for VAT. And that, therefore, is a first original question, that when a business, whether it's unincorporated or incorporated, commences to trade, one of the key questions, as you may already know, that uh, the business would wish to be able to answer is, do we need to register and therefore account for VAT and therefore be required to submit VAT returns on the required basis? That registration comes in two forms. We have what we'll be talking about here in this lecture, compulsory registration. And compulsory registration, there is no choice, as the word compulsory would imply. There is also voluntary registration. So before the rules require a trader to register for VAT and therefore account for VAT, that before that happens, they may voluntarily choose to register for VAT. The discussion of why a trader might opt into this system before they are required to operate the system is probably one that's on your mind now. But don't worry, that's for a later lecture there where we discuss the reason why voluntarily a trader, before there's any requirement for compulsory registration, chooses to act now and voluntarily register for VAT. So we're focused to begin with on compulsory registration. As we'll discover, there are two tests in relation to that compulsory registration. The first, and probably quite logically, is based on its historical turnover, the amount of sales that it has made in any given period, as we will discuss later. The trader, if they do, if they are required to account for VAT, therefore, will have to deal with the type of supply that they make. The supplies that they make, i.e. their sales. What is the nature of the trader's sales, as we'll call them the trader's supplies that it makes? Well, they may be, and the vast majority indeed of supplies made by the vast majority of businesses are going to be said to be standard rated. And in the UK, it has been and still remains a standard rate of VAT. It's been a fairly constant 20%. And what does that mean? It means that, of course, on top of their normal selling price, maybe a trader's normal selling price without VAT would be £100 for its particular product. If it is registered for VAT, either through compulsory or voluntary VAT registration. If it is registered, then it has to account for what we'll call output VAT on its sales. Output VAT on its sales. And that means that the trader is required to add 20% VAT to that selling price, i.e. the consumer the likes of you or I, assuming that now this product is reaching the eventual consumer, an individual, as I say, like you or I. The individual, when they walk into, say, to shop there, 
has to pay £120 for that product. They pay £120, but of course not all of that £120, as we know, goes to the trader in question. The trader gets to keep his £100 and then has to account for the £20, the 20% VAT thereon. So we have standard rated sales where when the trader makes such a sale, they are required to add 20% VAT. Now that is the most likely type of taxable supplies. We'll be talking a lot about taxable supplies. Strangely, we have another rate of VAT that is at least within our syllabus, and that, well, that's a very odd one, 0%. It's zero rated supplies. You may well consider why on earth do HMRC classify certain sales, certain outputs as being zero rated. So no VAT is charged thereon. It's at a zero percent. It's taxable, but at a zero percent. And yet there is then a third and final category of exempt supplies that a business may make, where again, there'll be no VAT. But when it comes to no VAT being chargeable on a supply, it is critical that we understand the different reasons as to why there is no VAT to be charged. Here we have an initial difference. The supply that we're making may indeed be a taxable supply, but it is zero rated. On the other hand, it may be an exempt supply, and therefore, of course, there is no VAT to charge. What we'll discover a little later in one of our lectures is that the supply itself could be outside the scope of VAT. So when we talk about no VAT being charged on a supply made by a trader, it could be for, in fact, any of three reasons. Though the two main ones we see here, that that supply, though a taxable supply, is at a zero rate, or it is not a taxable supply, it is an exempt supply, or it's none of those things, the less likely one, there's one instance where you see that in terms of our syllabus, and that is where the supply is said to be outside the scope of VAT. So again, obviously, no VAT to charge. But it still begs the question as to why we bother to differentiate between an exempt supply and a zero-rated supply. Well, in fact, this is an absolutely critical issue. Now then, just to reiterate what we've just said, taxable supplies are those that are either standard rated or zero rated. A trader is able to register for VAT and must then account for output VAT on sales, but may reclaim input VAT on purchases. So we talked about a trader most likely selling to us, like a shop, for example, to an individual, a consumer, an individual member of the public, who, of course, you or I, we are not registered for VAT. Traders, businesses are registered for VAT. So that trader, that shop, sold us the product for £120, keeps £100 as their own selling price on that product, and have collected on behalf of HMRC some £20 worth of VAT, as we can see there. It isn't their money to keep, it must be paid over to HMRC. But of course, we've sold a product. Where did we get that product from? If we're a shop, we bought it in from the manufacturer or from a wholesaler, in which case they are also likely to be VAT registered traders. And therefore, when we bought it, we would have had to have paid VAT on the purchase cost. Maybe again that when we bought it, that the wholesaler or manufacturer charged us £50 plus VAT. £50, 20% thereof, half of, of course, what you see there in this example so far, would be £10 worth of VAT. So when we bought the product, we'd have paid £60 for that item, inclusive of VAT. The amount of VAT on it, that was going to be some £10. We'll talk about accounting for the VAT a little bit later and how we compute that figure. If we're taking, of course, of that exclusive price, 
charged uh, to us by the supplier to us of this product, it was £50 plus 20%. So £50 was the VAT exclusive price. 20% VAT on 50 is £10 VAT, giving us a VAT inclusive price of £60. So when we paid our supplier the £60 due to them, we have suffered input VAT of £10. Well, any input VAT that we suffer on our purchases, on our other expenses that we incur, in terms of our VAT return, in terms of how we account for VAT, how do we determine what amount, if any, do we, a trader, have to pay over to HMRC in relation to our specified VAT return time period? We must see by how much does the output tax on our sales on this item £20 exceed the input VAT on our purchases and expenses and the input VAT we've suggested on this one we bought it for £50 plus VAT that therefore was £10 we had paid £60 so we suffered input VAT again I repeat that expression on our purchase or expense and we charge output VAT on the same now, if those were the only transactions, it's not going to be that, of course, but if these were the only transactions in a relevant VAT return period, we would have suffered input VAT of £10. We'd have charged output VAT on the sale £20. Therefore, the £20 that we would have otherwise owed to HMRC is reduced by the £10 of input VAT that we have suffered on our costs. And therefore, the amount due to HMRC is £10, 20 minus 10. So for a VAT return period, we take the output VAT minus the input VAT. Now, as we've said here, we have to be uh, registered for VAT to account for VAT. Again here, may reclaim input VAT on purchases and expenses, and that doesn't matter whether it's capital or revenue expenditure that we're talking about. But if a trader only makes exempt supplies, he is unable to register for VAT. And here's the critical point, cannot reclaim input VAT. So where I've got standard rated input, purchases and expenses, standard rated outputs here again are sales then we will account for VAT on the excess of the output tax minus the input VAT. If of course what we had done was to uh, make a sale that was zero rated then our selling price now would be a hundred pounds plus zero equals the self same 100 pounds. Now, if that is a zero rated supply, it is a taxable supply. A taxable supply on which, because of the zero rating, no output VAT is chargeable. But if we make taxable supplies, then we can register for VAT. We'll be looking later at the level of those supplies that would require us to register for VAT. We have to do that. But if we have here zero rated sales, but we've still got a standard rated input, think what that means. That on those two transactions, in you know, that return period, we've suffered input VAT of £10 on our purchases, while having to charge no VAT, it is at a zero rate, there, no VAT to be paid over to us by our customer. We've got a zero rated, we've got nil output tax. Therefore, if your input VAT exceeds the output VAT for a VAT return period, instead of us, the trader, paying HMRC, remember what it was? £20 minus £10, we paid them at £10. If we've now got input VAT of 10 and output VAT of 0, then they owe us. They will pay us £10. So the critical point about a taxable supply 
is that in relation to taxable supplies, whether standard and or zero rated, we are then able to recover any or all input VAT in relation to our purchases and expenses. And here's the difference between zero rated supplies and exempt supplies. If we were to make an exempt supply, it would be, again using these numbers, £100 plus nil. There is no zero rate, there's no taxability at 0% or 20%. This is an exempt supply, so there's no VAT to charge. So again, our customer pays us £100. But if these are the only supplies that we make, again, exempt supplies, then you cannot even register for input VAT. And if we can't register for VAT, register for VAT, sorry, if we cannot register for VAT, then we cannot recover input VAT. Input VAT that we've suffered here is £10. But if that input is direct re directly related to an exempt supply, the input is directly attributable related to an exempt supply, an exempt sale that we make, then we are unable to recover the input VAT. So think what that would mean. In terms of the trader, their sales price is going to be £100. That is what they get, that is what they keep. They do not pay anything over to HMRC. But the cost now is going to be the full £60 that will be unable to recover that input VAT of £10 there. So the cost that the business will incur for its purchase is going to be £60. We do not get back the input VAT of £10. If we had made a zero rated supply, then we still sell for £100. We pay the trader the same as we do now when we make an exempt supply. We pay £60. That is the price we have to pay. But with a zero rated uh, supply made, a zero rated sale made by us, then any input tax we suffer on our purchases, i.e. that £10, we can get back. They paid us £10. So our net cost is £50. So we sell for 100 we keep 100 we buy for 60 we get back the £10 input VAT on that. So the net cost is 50 We've made a profit of £50. If what we've made is an exempt supply, we still sell and sell for and keep £100. We still pay £60 for the product that we have purchased, but this time we cannot get back the input VAT on that purchase. Our full cost, none of which is recoverable, is £60. So we've now only made a £40 profit in relation to that sale. So there is a very big difference, therefore, between what are zero rated supplies, which are taxable supplies, just like your normal standard rated, but instead of charging 20%, it's 0%. There's a very big difference between those zero rated and those exempt supplies. If we make exempt supplies, then any input tax that we have suffered on our purchases and expenses will not now be recoverable. What does that do? It pushes up our costs. So to repeat here, Taxable supplies are either standard rated at 20% or zero rated at obviously 0%. The trader is able to register for VAT and must then account for output VAT on sales. If we make taxable supplies, we are able to register for VAT. Again, we'll discuss later. If we make such taxable supplies, we can voluntarily choose at any point to register for VAT or otherwise compulsory registration will take place. Again, a new business would want to know when do we have to register for VAT? Because if you don't register when you should have registered, 
you're going to get into trouble in terms of penalties and fines there. You do not want that to happen. So when do we have to register for VAT? When do we have to account for the output VAT on our sales and are then able to recover input VAT on our purchases? But that output VAT on sales recovery of input VAT on our purchases and expenses is only going to happen if, of course, we make taxable supplies. If we make exempt supplies, we still suffer the input VAT on what we buy in, but we do not charge VAT on our sale because it's an exempt supply means we are unable to recover the input VAT. As that says, if a trader only makes exempt supplies, he's unable to register for VAT and cannot reclaim input VAT. You may well be asking yourself, of course, the question, but what happens if we've got a mix of taxable and exempt supplies? Well, that then is when you are said to be partially exempt. But that issue is not a part, thankfully, of our Tax UK syllabus, so you don't have to deal with it. That is something that will await you at advanced taxation if you choose indeed to go down that particular route. OK, output VAT on the sales, recover input VAT on our purchases. If output VAT exceeds input VAT, we pay over through the VAT return system to HMRC. If input VAT exceeds output VAT in relation to our taxable supplies, then we'll get money back from HMRC. Right. Here we go, a little example I've prepared for you. If you want to make a note of that, and I'll talk you through it. Uh, we're told that a trader purchases goods at a cost of £60,000, including VAT. So we are buying goods from other VAT registered traders at a price of £60,000, inclusive of VAT. So there is input tax that the business has suffered on the purchases of those goods. The trader also incurs expenses. So we've got purchases that we've suffered input VAT on. We've got expenses that we've incurred that also we suffer VAT on. Here the expenses £12,000 including VAT. So the suppliers of goods have invoiced us at costs of 60000 and the uh, suppliers of those services have invoiced us for expenses incurred of £12,000, all of which are, of course, inclusive of VAT. Our business has then got on to sell those goods for £100,000 at the moment, exclusive of any VAT charge. So let's have a little look at how we would deal with this. First of all, let's assume that the business makes taxable supplies. Now, those taxable supplies could either be standard rated, so we charge 20% on the sales of £100,000, or zero rated, in which case there'd be nothing to charge on the sales of £100,000. But so long as the sales that we make are taxable supplies and we are registered for VAT, then we can reclaim, we can recover the input VAT on the purchases and expenses. So how much input VAT would that be? Now on the purchases, the VAT inclusive figure is 60,000. Now be very careful here. That is 60,000 inclusive of VAT. Remember what inclusive of VAT means. It means that on top of the seller's normal price, they have charged plus 20% of that selling price VAT, an extra 20% VAT. So it means that the price that we've paid to those vendors of £60,000 is their price plus 20% VAT. So it's 120% of what their otherwise sales price would have been. So if we're going to calculate a VAT inclusive figure, how do we calculate the VAT 
on that figure of £60,000. We do not take 20%. 20% was the figure charged on the VAT exclusive figure. This is now 120% of that figure. And we want 21 twentieths of that figure. So on a VAT inclusive figure, we take 21 twentieths. At its lowest common denominator, for ease of calculation there, you may realise that that is one sixth. But it is 21 twentieths. Now put that through your calculator and you will discover, again, even without maybe through the calculator, one sixth of 60,000 is 10,000 pounds. That is the amount of input VAT that we've suffered. The person who sold those goods to us would have had a sales price of 50,000 plus 20% VAT. Well, 20% on 50,000 would be 10,000 pounds. There is your 60,000 pound cost that we incurred. The vendor selling those goods to us, their price was 50,000 plus 20% VAT is another 10,000. So we had to pay our cost inclusive of VAT was 60,000. How much VAT is there in that 60,000? It is 10,000 pounds that you see there. So if you need to calculate a figure of VAT, which you may very well have to do in answer to an examination question, the first thing you've got to do is to look at the given figure and read as to whether that figure is inclusive or exclusive of VAT. Because if you were told that the purchase was 50,000 exclusive of VAT, then you'd have to work out 20% VAT on the VAT exclusive price. That was 10,000. If this is far more likely on a purchase, you're told the cost you actually incurred, which of course is inclusive of VAT, then you take 21 twentieths of that VAT inclusive figure. And so we get input VAT of 10,000 pounds that we've suffered. And then on the expenses, well, you should be able to work that figure out for yourself now as regards on that £12,000 inclusive of VAT, how much VAT have we suffered? So again, it's a VAT inclusive figure. You'll find that the numbers are, of course, very friendly here. Times 20 over 120, 21 twentieths, one sixth of 12,000 is £2,000. So we have suffered two lots of input VAT. Our input VAT that we have suffered for this particular period on the purchases and expenses that we have incurred amounts to £12,000. Now then, we will be able to claim that back off HMRC where it is as it is here in relation to taxable supplies. So let's look at the VAT that we then have to charge on our sales. Now let's assume to begin with that our sales are standard rated. If our sales are standard rated, remember the figure of sales, £100,000 exclusive of any VAT. So standard rated sale, £100,000 plus 20% VAT equals, of course, £120,000. So we would have issued sales invoices to our customers for the goods that we have sold to them, amounting to £120,000, which included £20,000 of VAT. £20,000 of VAT. Now, again, if that is the case, then we have output VAT, on those sales equal to. Now you can see what the figure is here. 100,000 exclusive plus 20% 20 was 20,000, 20,000 VAT. The other way of looking at it, of course, was if you've got a VAT inclusive figure, 120,000 times 20 over 120 equals, of course, again, 20,000 pounds. So look at what we've got our output VAT that we've charged on the sales that we have made to our customers. Remember that money is not our money. It belongs to HMRC. It is tax. It is value added tax. 
But against that, we can offset our input VAT that we have suffered on the goods that we have purchased and expenses that we have incurred that were chargeable to VAT anyway, £12,000 of input VAT. So on a VAT return, normally produced, as we'll see later, on a quarterly basis, we account for the excess of our output VAT over the input VAT. So we would have to pay Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs that difference between the output VAT on the sales and the input VAT on the purchases and expenses. So on this particular period, for this particular business, the business would have to pay out £8,000 of VAT, that excess of output VAT over input VAT. But that was where we had the most likely type of supply that was taxable, standard rated. Think what would have happened if it was zero rated. If it was zero rated, then very obviously in terms of output tax, it would be zero. There would be no output VAT. So then on our VAT return, think what we would have if we were now dealing with zero rated supplies. Our input VAT would still be exactly the same. We have suffered £12,000 of input VAT. Our sales, sorry, our sales in terms of our output VAT on sales would be nil. So this time we have suffered more input VAT than there is output VAT. This time, therefore, we could reclaim from HMRC £12,000. Instead of us paying them, they will pay us. We can reclaim from HMRC the £12,000 worth of input VAT that we have suffered. So look at the two types of supply taxable supply that we may make and we can see the impact in relation then to the amount if any of VAT that we pay over to HMRC. If we make taxable supplies what is a constant is our ability to recover that input VAT. We will get back that input VAT if we make taxable supplies. We then got to see whether on the sales that we make as a business we have to account and charge for VAT. If we do, then we had output VAT here of 20,000. We charged more VAT on our sales than we suffered on our purchases and expenses. We owe to HMRC, it's not our money, it's their money, 8,000 pounds. Whereas, if we have merely suffered VAT on purchases, but we have not charged any on our sales, then we have no money to pay over to HMRC and they will give us back the VAT that we've suffered. So the constant is the ability to recover input VAT so long as we make taxable supplies. If on the other hand we had made exempt supplies then although in terms of input tax we will still have suffered the £12,000 worth of VAT on our purchases and expenses, the input tax that we can recover will be nil. Our input tax recovered will be nil because we can only recover VAT on our costs in relation to the taxable supplies, the sales that we make as a business. Any input tax on purchases and goods, purchases of goods uh, acquired, expenses incurred on services performed for the business, the ability to recover that input tax is based on the type of supply we make. Make taxable supplies, either zero or standard rated, you get back the input VAT. But if you make exempt supplies, then Although you do not charge, of course, any output tax, that will be nil, you are unable to recover any of the input tax. Therefore, that input tax of 12,000 on your purchases 
on your expenses becomes a part of the cost base of the business. That therefore increases your costs by 20%. Now, what would be interesting here is for us to work out what from an accounting point of view would go through your profit and loss account in relation to these purchases, expenses and sales based on whether the business was making uh, taxable supplies or whether it was making exempt supplies. So you have to think about that for one moment, if you would, about how you'd now calculate the profit made by the business. Now remember, through the profit and loss account, as you should know anyway from your accounting studies, we will put there the figures of sales exclusive of VAT. Any VAT charged does not belong to us. It's then a question of what go in as your costs. If you're able to recover input VAT, so you make taxable supplies, then it's the net, the VAT exclusive figures that go through your profit and loss account. If you cannot recover input VAT because you make exempt supplies, then you incur the full cost, so it's the VAT inclusive figure. Look what will happen to the profits of the business based on the numbers that I provided to you there, please. So the calculation of the profit, therefore, now if the business makes taxable supplies, whether those are standard rated or zero rated, the sales figure, so far as the business is concerned, is £100,000. That is the price that would be charged by the trader. The only question is whether or not VAT had to be added. But the sales figure is the VAT exclusive figure, 100000 The purchases. Again, if we make taxable supplies, we can recover the input tax in relation to those purchases and expenses incurred. So it's the net cost that goes through our statement of profit or loss. So our net cost of purchases is 50 and expenses is 10. So the total costs incurred, £60,000, the profit is £40,000. Let's compare that with if the business were to make exempt supplies. Now, Again, just like with zero rated, there would be no VAT to charge. So if the business makes exempt supplies, the sales is still £100,000. Now again, that's going to be the same figure of sales, irrespective of whether or not we make uh, taxable supplies or exempt supplies. And if they're taxable supplies, irrespective of whether they are standard or zero rated. So the sales figure £100,000. But... If we make exempt supplies but have incurred costs inclusive of VAT, because we only make exempt supplies, we cannot register for VAT, and on that basis, we cannot recover input tax. So our business will incur the full VAT inclusive costs. We will not be able to get back the input tax suffered on our purchases and expenses. So the VAT inclusive figures are, again, as we've written above, 60,000, 12,000, total 72. So our profit figures now only 28,000 pounds. So we can see the impact, therefore, of whether or not the business makes taxable or exempt supplies. Now, we've said here that if we make taxable supplies, then we have a right to register for VAT. If we do not make any taxable supplies, then you cannot register for VAT and the consequential effects, as we've seen in terms of your base costs. But if you do make taxable supplies, then, as we've said, you may choose to register. We'll look at the basis of voluntary registration in just a short while. But the first issue that your client, your new business client, may be concerned with is when do they have to register? So what about compulsory registration? Right, let's have a little look then back at the note. OK, so back in your study notes at the start of Chapter 25, therefore, we've seen and we've discussed the idea that we're starting with the issue of compulsory registration, which is based on historical turnover. The levels of taxable sp supplies that we have made in the past up to the end of the most recent month. What are the rules here? Here in uh, Note B, we have the rule as regards compulsory VAT registration. A trader making taxable supplies must register, must register for VAT if during the previous 12 months the value of taxable supplies exceeded £85,000. However, VAT registration 
is not required if taxable supplies in the following 12 months will not exceed 83,000. These figures are all given exclusive of VAT. That 83,000 is not some random number that they've made up. There is, as we'll see in a later lecture, also a deregistration limit. If you fall below this level of tax supplies after you have firstly become registered, then you can choose to deregister if you wish. And that 83,000 is the deregistration limit. 85,000 is the initial registration limit. So if you've had this sudden one off, as you believe it to be, increase in sales figure, and then you're going to drop back below the 83,000, which would be the cutoff for deregistration, you don't have to register in the first place. But most of the questions that we're going to get will give you a series of months of levels of taxable supply made usually from the start of trading. And you've got to go through and work out up to a period of the previous 12 months at what point in on a rolling cycle, a period of 12 months, at the end of what month have we exceeded that VAT registration limit of £85,000. Once we have got to that month end where we've now topped the 85,000 over this 12 month period, then HMRC must be notified within 30 days after the end of the period. So you've got to tell them, look, I've reached this VAT registration threshold figure and exceeded it. When taxable supplies exceeded £85,000. So you must notify within 30 days of the end of that month. So that's one thing. So you've now notified them that you need to register. So when will you be registered with effect from and then have to account for VAT? The trader will be registered from the first day of the second month after the limit was exceeded. Or that won't be relevant for you in terms of an exam question from an agreed earlier date. That may sound odd. The trader will be registered from the first day of the second month after the limit was exceeded. So just to illustrate what that means, if the registration limit was exceeded as at the 31st of March 2021, then the business must register by the 30th of April. So there we go, within 30 days. You must register within 30 days. And it would be registered with effect from the 1st of May. So we've exceeded the level of £85,000 of taxable supplies within a 12-month period to the 31st of March 21. So we must then register within 30 days, which is clearly the 30th of April. But the registration is going back to those strange words there from the first day of the second month after. So we've hit the level by the end of March. First month after that is April. Second month after that is May. Therefore, from the 1st of May. You might think, well, isn't that just an odd way of expressing things? We have to have that because there's always the possibility and it, students then always ask the question. So what would happen if you hit that level of taxable supplies at the 31st of January 2021. Because if we're talking about uh, ending at the end of January, the next month is February. Famous, of course, for not having 30 days. Even in leap year, it doesn't have 30 days. So 31st of January 21, that means, of course, that you'd have to register within 30 days. Well, for that year, for 2021, We've got 28 days in February, so 28 plus 2, so you'd have to register by the 2nd of March. But you'd be registered with effect from, well, again, if it was 31st of January, one month after is February, two months after the second month is March. So with effect from the 1st of March. So you'd have to register by the 2nd of March, but you'd be registered with effect from and therefore have to account for VAT from the 1st of March. So that's the only reason why we express it in that odd way from the first day of the second month 
after you have exceeded that level of taxable supplies. Before what will be your homework exercise here that you have a go at example one, here's a quicker example for us to have a look at where the levels of taxable supplies made each month are higher and therefore we get to our figure of 85,000 or exceed 85,000 rather more quickly. So we got less months to deal with. So here we're told that our taxpayer commenced to trade on the 1st of March 2021 and has the following sales, all of which were taxable supplies as follows. And we've got to look at at what point thus compulsory VAT registration takes place. So remember we're working on a rolling 12 month cycle, though here we won't have to wait for more than 12 months. You can see I've clearly given you four months here. That's enough for us to get up to the 85,000 uh, level of taxable supplies and thus have to register for VAT on a compulsory basis. So March was £15,000. We then had April 20000 So the cumulative over those two months equals 35000 So we're not up to 85000 Add on the next month of May, that therefore add 25 to 35 equals 60000 we've still not reached that cumulative level in excess of 85,000 in the previous or up to this month end over a period of 12 months. That's just a three month period, but we're up to 60,000. Well, we don't have to wait much longer. We get the June taxable supplies at 30,000. Add that to your 60,000 cumulative total so far. And we're now up to 90,000, which of course here is in within just a, a four month period. So we've exceeded 85,000 by what would be June 30th, the end of June. So in which case, therefore, our re requirement under the compulsory registration VAT rules would apply so as we'd have to register within 30 days. So that's into the month following June is July, so the 30th of July. We'd then be registered with effect from the first day of the second month after you've reached that level of eight or exceeded rather the level of £85,000 of taxable supplies within a 12 month period. So that would make it we move into August. So you'd have to register within 30 days, so by the 30th of July and you'll be registered with effect from the 1st of August, meaning that from the 1st of August, you're now accounting for VAT. And as soon as you have to account for VAT, then we get interested in the courses. So if you account for VAT, you're going to have to submit VAT returns. On what basis do you do that? And what do they look like? How do we get that comparison of, as we saw in our first lecture, output tax, as compared to input tax. All of that coming up later. But hopefully there you see the basis for which we use on the compulsory registration rules and that question is made just a little bit longer in terms of what, as I say, you'll be doing now for homework between now and next time, whereby the levels of taxable supplies each month are somewhat lower. So what have we got to do? You've got to state here, firstly, when Orchid Limited will become liable to compulsory VAT registration. Based on that, the date by which Orchid must notify HMRC, and of course then the date that Orchid Limited will be registered with effect from. Again, whether you're talking about a trader, an unincorporated business, or whether you're talking as here about a company, Orchid Limited there, we are talking in terms of a trading business, uh, therefore the VAT registration rules apply irrespective of whatever form of business medium you've chosen to run your business through. Now, as you can see, these numbers are quite small as we go through. Now, we started at our first month of taxable supplies from the 1st of June 20, so for June 2020. So we will get through to the end of May so what you'll have to do first of all is to keep adding through on your calculator all of these months, 
June, July, August, all the way through, keep adding them up. And you're going to find that even by the time that you get to 12 months later, you haven't reached the level of, or exceeded rather, the level of £85,000 of taxable supplies. And what makes this more interesting, and the usual reason why they do it this way, is you don't then, simply when you move to June of 2021, add another 11800 to see whether, does that therefore take us over the level of £85,000? What we have to do is to work on a 12-month rolling cycle. So as we add in June 21, we must take away minus what we had there in June 2020. So it's the difference between those two figures that we would now be adding into our cumulative total. So we add in the most recent month and we take out the equivalent month from just over a year ago. You will find when you do those numbers that you might not even exceed 85,000 at that point, which sort of narrows it down that it's probably going to be here where that happens. But remember, as I say, as you're now working on a rolling 12 month cycle, when you add in July of 2021, you take out July of 2020. So you move forward, take out June 2020, add in June 21. Still not over, then take out July 2020, add in July of 21. And at that point, yeah, given that there are no other numbers, you are bound to have exceeded your limit. I need you to prove that for yourself and then answer the follow-on questions of course, which is the one's going to be tested in exam question. That is the date by which we must notify and the date will be registered with effect from. So if you can have a go at that, please, between now and next time and check out the answer before I see you. And we'll have a quick chat about that, a very quick chat indeed, just to make sure we're on the right lines before we then push on and talk about still compulsory registration. But rather than now looking on a historical basis, looking back over up to a period of the last 12 months there to see if we've exceeded that uh, 85,000 compulsory VAT registration limit, we'll now be looking at a future turnover, an expectation of what is going to happen in the future. And it is that that might require certainly businesses that really hit the floor running and uh, are going to have large levels of sales right from the very outset that will dictate when they have to register for VAT. But that is in our next lecture together.